Raider Nation, what's up? Welcome back to another edition of the Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. Rhett Lewis back here with Bucky Brooks. Excited to talk some draft with you. Big week as we get set to descend upon Indianapolis for the NFL Scouting Combine. But Bucky and I already have a combine under our belts. (laughs) The HBCU Combine got underway this week down in New Orleans, which uh, will culminate um, a fantastic week of football down there with the HBCU Legacy Bowl. Bucky, a big part of the broadcast on NFL Network. Uh, excited to get another little kind of bonus piece of All-Star Game season here, Buck. Yeah, no, it's great, man. Uh, we had an opportunity to do the Combine on Monday where we had a chance to look at some of the HBCU, HBCU stars, kind of do yeah. their thing. Uh, they were able to go through a full gamut of uh, the workout. We saw 40s and three cone and normal testing drills. We also saw them do the individual stuff. And that was kind of the precursor to a week down in New Orleans where they get a chance to compete at the HBCU Legacy Bowl. And so yeah. it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for all these guys. I can tell you, and we talked about it on NFL Network's broadcast, uh, much better crew this year than yeah. previous years. Crew is in shape. They're prepared. And you know, I, I think we've seen it kind of play out in the performances, not only at the combine, but through the first few practices this week. Uh, really impressive collection of players down here. Yeah, uh, just a, a couple of names. And we're going to go through, by the way, in this episode, we're going to go through Bucky's positional rankings on the defensive side of the ball is top five edge rushers, defensive linemen, linebackers, corner safeties, that whole uh, scenario. We'll get through that here over the course of the next 30 minutes or so. Um, want to remind you that if you missed the offensive positional rankings, uh, Bucky and I ran through that uh, in our last episode. So go back uh, through the archives and check that out if you missed it. And then, of course, we'll see all of these players in your top five at the Scouting Combine in Indianapolis next week, where we will have another episode for you. Uh, But did want to follow up a little bit on some of the HBCU stars that we saw Mm -hmm. this week, earlier in the week at the Combine. And then a lot of these guys then obviously get to try to translate all that testing onto the field in the HBCU Legacy Bowl this Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, on NFL Network, you, Steve Weitz, Charles Davis, and uh, Sherry Burris all on the call for that one. Looking forward to that. But, you know, what, a couple of the guys, I mean, the quarterbacks I thought really stood out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we we talked a lot about Davius Richard uh, from NC Central, you know, who was phenomenally productive at over 70 passing touchdowns, over 40 rushing touchdowns in his career. And then the running back, Jarvian Howard from Alcorn State, mm-hmm. felt like he had an NFL build. Buck. And, and again, if you're the Raiders and you're looking at trying to build out that running back room with or without Josh Jacobs, depending on what happens here, players like that, you know, could end up being, you know, maybe a guy, you know, later on in the draft, but you know, we've seen those day three running backs really take off. Yeah, we have seen those guys take off and you're right. You talked about the quarterback, Jeremy Musa and Davis yeah. Richard. Both of those guys have impressed. They're head and shoulders above the others that are in attendance. Yeah. They look really good. I'm excited to see uh, how they perform on Saturday when they get their chance to play in the game. But the running back, you talk about Jarian Howard. He has been really impressive. Not only when we watched him at the combine, you saw the size, the build, you saw the speed and the quickness and the agility and those things. But then when you put on the pads, you see him run with power. You can see the explosiveness. You can see how he gets in and out of cuts, uh, the way that he does his damage between the tackles, all those things. He comes as advertised. Nate just has to finish it up with a good week. Uh, But you're right, Rhett. Um, Talk about the Raiders. You talk about the number of day three or later guys that have had success in recent years. Uh, Howard is one of the many that could kind of fill the void as a late round or priority free agent addition. Yep. Yeah, yeah, certainly seen plenty in the priority free agent market to jump in there as undrafted guys and and make serious impacts. I mean, look at what Raheem Mostert has done, right, in the league, yeah. um, you know, out of Purdue and, and is certainly in his time with the Niners and, and the Dolphins. Plenty of those examples uh, are out there. On the defensive side of the ball uh, from the guys competing this week in New Orleans, I mean, we talked a lot, um, you know, about John Huggins from Jackson State, um, mm-hmm. you know, a guy who was highly recruited out of high school. Now, he's got some... He's got some off the field concerns that he's going to have to answer for, but that's one of the Mm -hmm. benefits of this week, right? He'll get a chance to sit down in front of NFL evaluators and have a chance to explain things that, you know, might've led to, you know, his up and down journey throughout his collegiate career that ultimately landed at Jackson state where he was productive. He's got a big NFL type frame and he tested really well too. 
Yeah, he tested really well. And you're right about the frame. You can see the yeah. frame and, and how he's able to use his size, strength, and physicality to kind of impact the game. You don't find guys who are 6'1", 211 pounds, who run 4'4", uh, who kind of had the, the pedigree that he had. Because you have to remember, he was a standout uh, high school recruit, goes to the University yeah. of Florida, finds his way to Jackson State, plays in the Coach Prime, and those guys at Jackson State, and had a lot of success. Uh, really good player, really intriguing prospect. And it's not just what he can do as a position player, but it's what he what he could bring as a potential special teamer that enhances yeah. his value. Yeah, that too. Um, and so, man, we had uh, we had some fast times. You know, we had uh, we had some four threes in there. I mean, we had some some good uh, agility drills from a lot of these guys. So it was a lot of fun to watch that combine. I know you're going to get a chance to see up close and personal how those guys kind of translate that into the real world football skills on the field at the HBCU Legacy Bowl. So since we ended on the defensive side of the ball there, let's start on the defensive side of the ball with the top players uh, in this year's draft class. And look, we're going to start with the edge defenders. And obviously, look, we get it. Raiders took Tyree Wilson last year. I don't know if they're going to go edge rusher again at the top of the draft, but you know, who knows? You want to build, you know, you want to build that 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 group out. And, you know, perhaps this is some something we see, you know, maybe the Raiders try to address, you know, a little bit deeper into the draft. Certainly with Max Crosby on one side, you get Tyree going mm -hmm. on the other side. So you're probably not going to be in the market for a Dallas Turner or a Latu Latu or Jared Verse. So you have one, two, three in your top edge defender group. And then Chop Robinson from Penn State ends up at number four. And Braylon Trice uh, from Washington ends up at five. But to give you a sense of how the draft might shake out, let's dig in a little bit on those players as to what might stand out to you about some of them. Yeah, so the, the, this group of pass rushers is intriguing because they have uh, explosive get-offs and what we call like chase-down quickness. Yeah. These guys are, are really dynamic when it comes to getting off the ball and finishing at the quarterback. Dallas Turner, uh, Latu from UCLA. These guys understand how to, as we talked about in fishing terms, how to get a fish to the boat. They know how to run down the quarterback. They can get to them. Uh, their closing speed pops when you look at the tape. Uh, but it's not just them. It's Jerry Verse from Florida State, who also has that explosiveness that you're looking for, the ability yeah. to bend and burst and do it. And Chop Robinson, who you know well, obviously, like being well versed in the big game team, record, man, he can absolutely take over a game. And yeah. that speed, that explosiveness, his ability to dip and rip and bend and turn the corner, uh, he's a freak show. Uh, those guys are going to be intriguing. And the one thing that we know about this class or that we should know about this class, people are talking about the first round and guys that are first round talents. This year, maybe 18 to 20 first round talents. But there's a, a, a number, a, a lot of guys that kind of sit in that 20 to 45 range yeah. where they can either be drafted in the first round or they fall back to the second round. But they're similarly graded guys. And it really comes down to the beauties in the eye of the beholder where those guys come off the board. Yeah, I think that's a it's a good way to kind of um, you know put those guys together here and where they end up because I think we'll be talking about Turner as a top ten pick, Latu maybe, um, and, but you know he'll he'll be gone in that first you know in those first twenty picks, verse probably as well. You know, Chop Robinson again. You talked about um, being a game wrecker. I, I feel like he's like a Mariano Rivera, like a closer, right? Like if you need the play, and, and look, Raider fans know this with Max Crosby. Like, you know, if you need a sack, if you need to get off the field late in the game, Max is going to do that for you. Kind of the same way T.J. Watt does it for the Steelers. Always finding, you know, has that knack for finding a way to create a game-changing play at the very end. Chop Robinson can certainly do that. Um, watched him in person. Uh, Ruin my alma mater's day uh, as a potential upset bid uh, on the road at Happy Valley. And Chop had a strip sack for a fumble that iced the game. So, um, Braylon Trice, again, another another big-time pass rusher uh, as well. Chris Braswell, a guy you're keeping an eye on, played opposite Dallas Turner at mm -hmm. Alabama. Those two guys, probably the best edge duo uh, in all of college football this year. Let's move to the defensive tackles here, Buck. This is an interesting group. you got a pair of dudes from Texas in Byron Murphy mm -hmm. and Devondre Sweat, who are your two and three defensive tackles. Chris Jenkins has got some NFL bloodlines with his dad um, in there at number four out of Michigan, the national champions. Darius Robinson had a phenomenal senior bowl week and is definitely in the first round conversation now based off that from Missouri at number five. But everybody looking up at Jerzon Johnny Newton, uh, who for the last two years has dominated the Big Ten on the interior. But he's not one of those like 
big 335, 300, you know, 40 pound guys that you look at as like traditional nose tackles or, you know, like more traditional defensive tackles. He's a 300 pounder that I feel like could give you some versatility depending on the system that he ends up in. Yeah, no, he's, he's, look, he is the crown jewel of the class. He's a really outstanding prospect. Uh, when you look at him, heavy handed, can stop the run, great with his hands in terms of like his combat skills, the yeah. way he's able to kind of get up, push and pull, dip and rip, the way that he works off of blocks. He's exactly what you want uh, at the position. He's kind of textbook in terms of the way that he does it. Uh, and even though when you look at the sack reduction, people say he's more of a pocket pusher, more so than a pass rusher. He is disrupted because he's always kind of in the way. And yeah. we have seen in the National Football League, it's about disruption. It's about having people in the middle that can alter the timing of the passing game by being in the face of the quarterback, being in his feet, not allowing him to be comfortable. He yeah. does all of those things. And that's why the buzz is around him being the number one defensive tackle in this class. Yeah. And, and look, um, you know, as you look at the Raiders, you know, where they're at, Bilal Nichols, Adam Butler, John Jenkins, you know, all unrestricted free agents, you know, going in this year. And then, you know, your top, you know, you're pay the guys you're paying the most to along the defensive line are out on the edge, right? And Max Crosby, Tyree Wilson still in his rookie deal. And then you've got kind of an assortment of rotational players, right? Uh, you know, Malcolm Kuntz on the edge. And then it's Jerry Tillery. It's one, you know, one of last year's rookies, Byron Young. Uh, kind of in there in the interior, along with Marquand McCall, Nesta Jade Silvera, guys like that. So I really do feel like th this is an intriguing position for the Raiders to really dig in, dig in on here with this defensive tackle group. And it does feel like there's a lot of different ways they could go based on body type and fit in a scheme. Yeah, they absolutely can go a bunch of different ways. It really comes down to how Patrick Graham wants to fill out yeah. uh, this, this defense and, and what do they need on the interior, we can say w without question, the end of the year, the Raiders defense started to step up and play really, really well. Yeah. Uh, it was active. It was disruptive. They played like their hair was on fire. And I would say the one common trait that whoever comes in, if they decide to draft somebody or bring anybody in, they're going to have to be a high energetic, yeah. relentless pursuer because as uh, Antonio Pierce routinely points to, Max Crosby and says, that, hey, we got to get on his level. Talking about the rest yeah. of the team. Uh, he, he, look, he, he's saying it. They want a bunch of high energy, relentless pursuers, a bunch of guys that play hard from snap to whistle and finish plays off the right way. Um, so those guys are going to have to have those traits. And there are plenty of those guys like that in the draft. But I just think stylistically, we know exactly what we're going to get uh, from whoever comes in because they kind of set uh, Max Crosby as the standard in terms of the effort, the energy, and the dominance that you have to display. Yeah, and, and you know, I think the the two guys from Texas kind of encapsulate mm -hmm. the idea of like, all right, what fits best for you in terms of this year's, you know, defensive tackle class? Because, you know, you've got Tavondre Sweat, you know, mm -hmm. who you look at as maybe a traditional nose, right? At, at 6'3", yeah, 360 pounds, whereas Byron Murphy... Um, you know, at six one three oh eight, maybe a bit more of like a penetrating defensive tackle, you know, a guy you can count on to provide a little bit of pass rush here and there. Maybe you can also move around a little bit, a little shorter, right? At six foot one. Um, but but again, that that's where you know those two guys kind of represent like, all right, so we've got the bigger, bulkier guys here on one side, mm -hmm. and we've got the the guys that are maybe, you know, a bit more of the um of those who can wreak havoc in the backfield type of type of players. Yeah. So when you look at Sweat, you're, you're right, man. He is a massive, I mean, just a massive man at the point of attack. Right. I mean, you have to go back to the days of like the Ted Washington's who yeah. was a long time pro bowl player played in Buffalo. I think I mean, bounced around the league, played a bunch of different places, but just can control the point of attack. And He's immovable. You just can't move him off the spot. And what that does is that just creates opportunities for your linebackers to run and chase because the interior offensive lineman can't climb and get to the linebackers. He is a massive dude, great strength and power, just a space eater that, that dominates. Uh, yeah. You talk about Murphy. Murphy is a different type, different style player. But, man, the athleticism, the the, the explosiveness, all that stuff pops, the disruption. Uh, yeah. it, it's funny that they were kind of the yin and yang to each other at Texas. But as you're building out that defensive line, it's important that you you have those those the ability to kind of balance the defensive line with a heavy-handed dude at the point of attack. And then you have someone that's a little more athletic that can be the pass rusher. I'm sure the Raiders are trying to find that they're trying to find guys that can add to that because 
yeah. as this defense continues to evolve, because we have to remember uh, in the FC West, you're talking about Pat Mahomes and what the Kansas City Chiefs do. You want to be able to impact Pat Mahomes by getting pressure up the middle. You now have Sean Payton, who's going to find his quarterback and how they want to play and they want to be balanced and run it and throw it with a quarterback that can do it from the pocket. You have Jim Harbaugh and the physicality and the toughness he's going to bring with the L.A. Chargers while they're running the football but setting Justin Herbert for big play opportunities. You have to be dominant on the interior to be able to get out of this division. The Raiders are well aware of that. I think they'll pay a close, close attention to the defensive tackle. Yeah, and and look, I think um majority of these guys look are going to be going to be off the board, you know, in the first round. Uh I think Murphy for sure is going to be a first rounder. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we talked uh, about Johnny Newton is going to be a first rounder. I think you'll also get, you know, Darius Robinson um could very well be in that group. So, you know, the Tavondre Sweat, I think it again, it's more of a fit, right? It's more of a, you know, is mm-hmm. that what you're really trying to do with your defensive tackles? Chris Jenkins feels like a bit more of a day two guy. So there, there will be some opportunities beyond the Raiders pick at 13 to bolster this group. But some of the top guys might be available there at 13, which could be interesting uh, for the silver and black for sure. All right, let's move on to the linebacker group here. So these are the way that you've done it is you've got the edge rushers mm-hmm. in one group, and then these are your off-the-ball linebackers. These are your Robert Spillanes, right? The, the, yes. This group. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, this yeah, this is a group that absolutely will play in the box, in between the yeah. tackles. Uh, it's a mix of more of your traditional Mike linebackers and the old-school Will linebackers that play yeah. off the ball, they can run and chase, and these things. I'm going to say this about the linebacker class. I don't expect one to come off the board, board in the first round, but I do expect day two, a run on these linebackers because I think they're good. I think they're really solid, and there's a lot to like about them from their instincts, awareness, and playmaking ability. Uh, yeah. Adrian Cooper from Texas A&M is, is going to be in the conversation. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. from Clemson. Peyton well, Wilson from North Carolina State. Cedric Gray from North Carolina. Junior Colson from Michigan. All of these guys are really intriguing, and they're intriguing in, like, different ways. Cooper is just a, kind of like the freak show of an athlete, sideline to sideline, good cover skills, pass rush ability, kind of checks off the boxes in a bunch of different areas. Yeah. Uh, Trotter is like the instinctive playmaker that he has the athleticism, but man, the bloodlines, his dad played for a long time in the National Football League, was a guy that kind of commanded the middle of the field, controlled it, and his son has that in spades. Uh, Peyton Wilson, you want to watch some fun tape? Throw on some tape from Peyton Wilson from NC State and watch this guy just chase people all over the yeah. field. Just relentless in his pursuit, nasty and violent in his play. Just love his temperament and what he brings when healthy. I mean, he has the potential to be a dominant player for a long time in the league. And I would say this, Cedric Gray from North Carolina, just attack the machine. Just always around it. You check the stat sheet, you watch the tape, you just see it match up. The number of tackles shows up on tape because he is always around the football. Yeah, so good year to be a uh, off the ball linebacker from the Carolinas, uh, Clemson, NC State, North Carolina, all well represented in Bucky's top five linebackers as you laid them out: Cooper, Trotter, Wilson, Gray, and Colson, one through five. So funny story about Cedric Gray. Um, I had a chance to talk to him uh, recently, and man, he had a he had a good story about your guy Mac Brown here. So Ced comes in, and North Carolina was his only FBS offer. Right. It was only power five, mm-hmm. you know, FBS offer coming out of high school was a, you know, was a really good player um, in the area and just uh, didn't get that kind of interest. So he went to UNC, you know, great mm-hmm. opportunity there. And, you know, he had this, you know, he got on campus like so many of us and so many players end up doing and got caught up in a little bit of the freedom, right, that he mm-hmm. had and just was not doing all the things that he was supposed to do, both from a, you know, from a school perspective. Um, And then from a responsibility perspective within, you know, the football program, and he remembers and recalled the story, Mac Brown calling him into his office, sitting him down and absolutely went off on him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he told the story. He's like, well, you think you think you've earned something here already? You, this is your freshman year. I tell you what, I'm gonna, if you don't start picking things up in the classroom and here with this program, I'm going to send you back. I'm going to send you back home. You can be pouring coffee for somebody at a coffee shop and said, like, looked at him. He's like. And it clicked, right? And the great coaches know what it takes to reach their players. And it clicked at that moment. Cedric Gray ended up becoming a captain for the Tar Heels and ended up leading them in tackles the last couple of seasons. So, um, 
you know, he was coached well at UNC. He's a good technician. He's around the football a lot. He makes plays on the ball. Um, he's a guy I'd want on my team, Cedric Gray. So as the as the Raiders kind of look at where they're at from a linebacker perspective, obviously we know Robert Spillane uh, is well regarded in the building and with Antonio Pierce. You got Divine Diablo, but again, both those guys are going to be unrestricted free agents going into twenty five. Um, so yeah. like it, it you, you're going to have to start bolstering depth at that position group, and I feel like this group will give them an opportunity to do that. Yeah, this group definitely has a lot of pieces that will allow them to fortify the depth at those positions. And uh, Tom Telesco, uh, JoJo yeah. Wooden, who has recently been hired as assistant general manager coming over, they understand the importance of depth. They also understand the importance of being able to look ahead and kind of see where the potential uh, holes could be. And so with the imp impending free agent status of some of those guys that you mentioned, you absolutely got to take a look at the position. You got to take a look at how can we continue to always get better? Uh, one of the ways is just being on it when it comes to the draft. Sometimes you got to go and attack positions before it's a glaring need. Yeah, great point. Uh, Junior Colson, another really good option, played a lot of football at Michigan um, and you know knows what it means to be a physical player in a, a real physical league in the Big Ten and, uh, and obviously was a big-time impact player uh, for the Wolverines on that national championship run this year. Let's move to the cornerback class. You never have enough good corners, right? And the top dude in this group, I think, is is kind of unequivocally right now. Or, um, you know, it, it feels like it. Terry and Arnold mm -hmm. is is pretty much a consensus uh, top, you know, corner in this group. No matter who you ask, right now from Alabama, and his teammate Kool Aid McKinstry rounds out your top five at number five. So Arnold at one, McKinstry at five. Then two, three, four go this way. Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Cooper DeGene, who's got great return ability mm -hmm. to obviously real value there from Iowa at number three. And then Quinion Mitchell had a phenomenal senior bowl week. We talked about him a little bit in a previous episode from Toledo has really put a stamp on this draft season thus far with his name. And we're talking about a, you know, potential first round pick there. Yeah, we absolutely are. I mean, really excited about the cornerback class. And the reason why I'm excited about the cornerback class is they have size, they have length, they have athleticism. They have uh, what I call uh, very toolboxes or very tools in their toolbox so they can play a, a, a bunch of different techniques, whether it's press, off, bail, they can do it all. Arnold is the one that everyone talks about. High IQ, just kind of gets it on a big level. Can Look, he, he's a versatile guy that can, can play anywhere. Um, yeah. Love that he can go in outside he can play man-to-man -man. he can play zone he kind of has that personality where he's going to be an instant leader when he steps into your lineup just love everything that he brings in Wiggins you have a, a another player that is I would say kind of scheme friendly uh he has that has a lot now the thing about Wiggins is people are going to be hot and cold on him there's some scouts that you talk to they absolutely love him. there are others that are not as high on him and when you look at it, like some of it, you know, we talk about the physicality, the toughness and being able to dig in there. Like, does he have enough to kind of up the ante and some right. of those traits? But he's a really good player. DeGene, who from Iowa and anyone who is familiar with Big Ten football and Iowa football should know that on defense, you're talking about the best of the best. You're talking about guys yes. that are refined, guys that are like technically savvy, guys that really think the game well. DeGene falls into that category. You talked about his return skills. I just think about, like, the challenges that he sees on a weekly basis, people trying to attack him. But, man, he never blinks. He never wilts. He <laughs> handles it. This is a guy that I think is, is going to have a lot of success in the pro, and he can do it in a variety of ways. And I think he also has some position flexibility. And then we talk about Quinya Mitchell. Uh, the late yeah. Al Davis would love him. He's athletic. Uh, he dominated down at the senior bowl. He dominated his level of play. Uh, when he played in the MAC, he's just a really good football player. His stock is going to soar after people see him work out at the combine. And then Kool Aid McKinstry, uh, all the things that we talk about with Terry and Arnold in terms of the IQ and smarts and instincts, McKinstry has it. McKinstry didn't play to the level that many of us expected him to play, but don't yeah. get it twisted. He's a really good player. He's a really good player. And the farther he gets away from the season and the more he's able to kind of work out on his own and people can see him. I think there's going to be a greater appreciation for his game. Terry and Arnold, by the way, is a fantastic interview. Like, yeah, everything you'd expect from a dude who you want to stick out there on the island, 
he's got all the confidence to make that work. And it's, 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 it's in a, a really positive way, I would say. And you know, sometimes that can be viewed as a negative. That's not the case with Arnold. I really enjoyed getting a chance to spend some time with him at the Rose bowl uh, when he was uh, getting ready to take on the Michigan Wolverines. And then just looking at where the, you know, the Raiders are with the the cornerback group. Um, obviously you got Brandon Faison under, under contract still uh, Nate Hobbs, Coming up uh, last year under contract, you know, drafted Jacorian Bennett last year and saw some run this year. And you're looking for the next step there, right? The former Maryland Terrapin uh, cornerback, who, by the way, as we are on the cusp of Combine Week, lit up the Combine, as well mm-hmm. as his uh, his former teammate Deontay Banks. Those dudes were super fast on that Lucas Oil Stadium turf. Um, and then you got to figure out, you know, wh- what's going to happen with Amik Robertson, whose contract is mm-hmm. up, uh, unrestricted free agent. So, again, Jack Jones, you know, came in, you know, last year late. So there's there's some guys there that you're counting on and then some that, you know, you've got to figure out what the future looks like. So digging on on this qu- cornerback group could, again, you know, be a way that the Raiders look to uh, continue to build. And again, Ennis Rakestraw is another guy that's getting a lot of first round buzz. You've got him as a guy to keep an eye on here out of Missouri. Um, could very well see him pop into the first round, if not early day two, uh, in the second round. Let's move to the safety group, where again, if I set the if I set uh, set it up by telling you where the Raiders sit here, Trayvon Merrig, believe it or not, coming into the last year of his contract, um, you know, on a, a second round rookie deal, you've got um, you know Chris Smith, Jaden Grant, Tyreek Jones, again, you know, players. Um, you know, Marcus Epps, you know, the guy who's making the most money out of this group, uh, but playing in the last year of his contract. So, again, this looks like a group that, that you know, the Raiders are going to be playing close attention to and, and Raider Nation should be paying close attention to. And you've got it uh, starting out with the safeties uh, with Tyler Newbin, fantastic mm-hmm. playmaker in the secondary, leading the way for Minnesota. Yeah, when we talk about the overview of the safety position, yeah. a lot of center field players, a lot of guys with great ball skills and instincts. Uh, Newbin kind of leads the way. Interception machine, 13 career interceptions, just a great job of not only like understanding what he's doing, but does a great job of baiting quarterbacks into mistakes. And you see it time and time again. This is a guy that just kind of has a knack for making plays. I I, I just love watching him play. He He's going to be terrific at the next level. Um, Cameron Kitchens is another one that has kind of created um, – a nice niche for himself as what we call a big play eraser. Takes away the yeah. deep ball, just really instinctive. Does 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 a really good job of kind of being the I would say the ornament on top of the Christmas tree. Like, like that. that's the best way. Great analogy uh, to talk about it. And another guy that that we'll talk about is Kalen Bullock from USC. Rangy center field player can get from the middle of the field to the top of the numbers easy when it comes to the range. Ball skills are there, instincts are there. The one thing that he has to correct. He just has to be a consistent tackler. Uh, when you think about the last line of defense as set as safety, you got needs to be a sure tackler. That he cleans up that area. Man, you talk about a guy who has all star type potential. Yeah, um, good group there. The the Georgia duo, uh, Javon Bowler, Tyreek Smith, uh, or Tyke Smith. Um, you know, and then Tyler Newbin. I loved watching play. Like just uh, you know, his brother actually ended up uh, having a terrific year as a kind of surprise running back contributor for the Golden Gophers. So got plenty of athleticism in that family. Tyler Newbin, ball hawk. In fact, I believe had the game ceiling interception for Minnesota week one against Nebraska last year, helped set up a game winning field goal. A um, lot, of, lot of plays on the ball from Tyler Newbin. Now this was an interesting group because I remember talking to Jim Nagy at the senior bowl, the safety group in the all-star circuit was one where they really had to dip into the underclassmen which they were allowed to do for the first time this year. So I, I don't know how deep the safety group is, but in those five guys that you just laid out, definitely some impact players there and some ones uh, that we'll be watching uh, at the Combine next week. Uh, so that wraps it up there with the positional rankings. Bo Braid, by the way, another one to keep an eye on uh, mm-hmm. from uh, from Maryland, Maryland, who you've got listed there. Yeah, yeah, another one of the – boy, that Maryland secondary has had some players now the last couple of years. Um, obviously, we just talked about J.B. H. Corey and Bennett, um, mm-hmm. now a member of the Raiders at that cornerback spot. But excited to get back to Indianapolis with you, Buck, and uh, to catch up with our friends from Silver and Black Productions in person like we did a, a year ago. So uh, excited to, to kind of get a chance to get a feel for the group again and – um, and perhaps uh, talk to some of the decision makers uh, from this uh, this new look Raiders front office, right? Always always good to get that feel in person about you know what they value and and where they spend their time, you know. 
Yeah, no, it should be fun, man. It's really exciting this time of year because uh, as much as we like to hang on the results of Super Bowl 58, yeah. uh, we get to turn the page. All eyes are on Super Bowl 59 and building the best team that can compete for the title. And excited to see who jumps out to us uh, at the Combine once the field drills begin on Thursday from the Combine. And we'll be back with you live from Indianapolis next week with our friends at Silver and Black Productions uh, helping us out. And so we we look forward to bringing you another episode uh, next week. So for everybody uh, here, part of this production, we appreciate you. We appreciate you guys for being a part of it. And we'll see you next week from Indianapolis.